Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Kellogg's recently introduced a line of glazed donut hole cereal that comes in three different flavors. Frosted Flakes, Apple Jacks, and Crave. For anyone questioning the logic of eating glazed donut holes for breakfast, they offer the following indisputable logic. Glazed is genius! In fact, maximum glaze will give you maximum flavor. And their product is mathematically sound. Why did they pick the shape of a donut hole instead of a standard donut shape of a ring? They say, we did the math. Donut holes are the perfect shape to deliver more glaze. The donut hole has a surface area of 4 pi r squared, whereas the ring donut would have an area of 2 times pi squared times big R times little r. My first reaction to hearing the news was to have a huge smile. I thank Kellogg's for putting mathematical formulas on the packaging of breakfast cereals. We should all be so lucky to think about math first thing in the morning as we have cereal. But there is a part that caught the attention of the internet. There is a claim that we did the math that donut holes are the perfect shape to deliver more glaze. So naturally, the internet wondered, did they actually do the math? An engineer, Nathaniel Olson, said that this is a mathematical blunder. He did an analysis that states donut holes would not be the perfect shape to deliver more glaze. In order to see why Kellogg's has made a mistake, let me take a step back and describe some of the mathematical shapes. On the one hand, imagine we have a solid sphere. And on the other hand, imagine we have a solid ring torus. In order to say which shape will have more glaze, we are effectively asking the question, if these two shapes have the same volume, which shape has more surface area? Let me explain how these shapes are formed. So let me begin with the shape of a ring torus. Here I have a graph in Desmos, and we have the graph of a circle in a plane that's going to be revolved around an axis. Let's say this circle has a radius that's equal to little r, and the distance to this axis of rotation is equal to big R. If we rotate this circle around the axis of rotation, we will form the shape of a ring torus. Now let's consider a solid shape so that everything is filled inside of the surface. The volume of this will be equal to 2 pi squared times big R times little r squared. And the surface area will be equal to 4 pi squared times big R times little r. Now we formed a torus by rotating a circle around an axis of revolution. So let's form a sphere in exactly the same way. Let's think about a half circle that is rotated around an axis of rotation. Let's say this half circle has a radius equal to r. If we rotate it around and then consider the entire surface being filled inside so we have a solid sphere, we can use the famous formula that the volume is equal to 4 thirds pi times r cubed and the surface area is equal to 4 times pi times r squared. Equipped with these formulas, let me now illustrate that a torus has more surface area for the same volume of a sphere. Let's start out with a sphere that has a radius equal to 2. Think about this solid sphere as being a piece of dough or a piece of clay. If we reshape this into another shape, we will have another shape which has exactly the same volume, but its surface area may be different. So let's imagine pinching at the top and slowly stretching out along the sides. If we do this, we can form a torus that has slightly more surface area for exactly the same volume as the sphere. In fact, if we continue this a little bit more, its surface area will definitely be larger. And we can imagine continuing this. If we reshape the torus so that we stretch it out further and further so that the distance of the axis of revolution is farther, we can keep getting a torus that has more and more surface area for exactly the same volume. So we can definitely illustrate that a torus has more surface area for the same volume of the sphere, 
which means that a torus would have more glaze than the sphere would per volume. In fact, this is true for many three-dimensional shapes. If we look at the ratio of a shape's surface area to its volume, it is the case that a sphere has the lowest ratio. In other words, the sphere will have the least surface area per volume, which means the sphere would have the least amount of glaze compared to any of these other shapes. We can also illustrate this visually in the following graph. Each of these lines represent the surface area to volume of each of these particular shapes. The blue line at the very bottom, which will be the lowest, represents that of a sphere. The sphere has the least amount of surface area per volume. This is not just a statistical statement. There is a formal mathematical result called the isoparametric inequality that states a sphere has the smallest surface area per given volume. It's not the easiest thing to prove. It took mathematicians hundreds and thousands of years to formally prove it. But this result actually would say that a sphere has the least surface area per given volume, which would mean that a donut hole is the worst possible shape if you're trying to maximize the glaze. So returning to the cereal packaging, when Kellogg says, we did the math, donut holes are the perfect shape to deliver more glaze, I unfortunately have to say, sorry, Kellogg. When you say you did the math, you do not want to glaze over the details. I will conclude the video with a huge thanks to the YouTube community. There's a new community page on the YouTube mobile app where you can post problems and you can also comment on posts that I make. I made a post that I needed your help to check for math in this video. So I actually posted some formulas and I asked people to double check my work. When I say I did the math, I'm just one person, so it's good to have a second set of eyes. There's nothing wrong with making a mathematical mistake. What you should do is learn from the mistake, learn from others, and try to correct it. So I want to thank everyone who checked my work, and everyone said that what I did was correct. So I have a huge thank to everyone who commented, whether you were actually able to check out the formulas or you just checked out the post. I thank you very much. And some of you are still commenting on the post, even though I've already made the video. I sincerely thank you. Please do check out the community page. It's a great place we can continue to have these conversations. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.